I think a lot of people probably look up to me just because I'm a little different. Number one, uh, I was never afraid to like work a real job, I'll call it. I've seen a lot of bodybuilders over the years talk about how they can't work a job and compete. I was working in the corporate world for many, many, many years, working a lot of hours. And that's what people do in the real world. They work, they have jobs. And I think they see me as somebody who, who worked and still pursued his dream. I left the corporate world, but that wasn't until probably four years ago. And I think people see that I actually care about my family. And in the real world, people have families. They love their families. It's their priority. I think I'm more reflective of just the general grinder out there, the guy that has, has the nine to five, that has a family. I mean, that's me. I, re I represent all those guys and they support me. And it means a lot to me. It really means a lot to me. You know, I've come up short so many times winning a pro card, and I felt like a failure in many respects. Many times people were talking about me and expecting me to win, and I didn't win. You know, when you come so close over and over and over, it starts to play with your head. You start to think, maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe my genetics aren't good enough. Maybe this, maybe that. Your mind really plays tricks with you. Watching John come so close so many times just reaching and striving for his goal has been um, heartbreaking. It's really, he works so hard, he is so dedicated, and just to see him come so close, it's just, it's heartbreaking and it's um, amazing to me to watch him and I learn a lot from him because while he might be down about it. Initially, he just takes it in his stride, okay, what am I gonna do next? What can I do better? What can I improve? Sometimes it feels like I'm more nervous than he is, which is probably not the case, but I'm so anxious just sitting there in the seats just waiting for them to call somebody else's name for second place instead of his. <laughs> it's tough, man. I mean, second place is not the place you want. Sometimes you'd almost rather just get destroyed and get eighth place in second, coming that close. It's like, you know, the old dangle of the carrot. Get really close, and then time after time after time. Man, it was pretty disappointing, to be honest with you. One of the absolute best days of my life was when I got my pro card. I've done a lot of shows where people around me were like, oh, you won, you won, you won. But I knew in my heart that I was probably gonna get second or third, just the way, you know, when you competed as long as I have, you kind of know where you stand based on how they run you through prejudging. And the show where I won my pro card, after prejudging, I actually thought, you know what, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna win. That is the first time I ever did a pro qualifier where after the prejudging, I thought, I, I actually think I'm gonna win. So I'm just dying for the night show to get there. I just can't wait, just so excited. And they start counting down the places, fifth place, fourth place, third place and I just kept telling myself contain your emotions contain your emotions I'm an emotional person and I could feel my emotions just building up building up and they announced second place and I heard the crowd in New York go nuts it just broke me down I mean I was elated I was so happy I knew the crowd was ecstatic that I won and they were behind me I, I couldn't control my emotions I cried was crying on stage, something I said I'd never do, but <laughs> I did. And what's even better than that is they brought Mary backstage. She was a part of it, and you know, a lot of us were really emotional backstage. And I wish we had kind of captured that moment on film because it was one of the mo most emotional hours of my life. Mary and I went out to eat to get a bite to eat, and we were just sitting there looking at each other. And it's like we did it. We finally did it after all these years, we did it. To me, a pro card, I don't look at it as now I can compete and make money in prize winnings or anything like that. I just look at it as it's recognition for all the work that I've put in. And not only that, that I'm actually one of the few that can win a pro card. That in itself, that makes me happy. All those years, I barely missed and I wonder to myself, Am I good enough? Am I really good enough? And I said no, no many times. This was proof that I am good enough to be a pro. 
And that's kind of that's kind of why I rushed straight out and started in pro shows because I thought, okay, I'm just going to double check here to make sure that I actually am good enough to be a pro. And you know, and I, and I did really well in my first few shows. So that was just icing on the cake at that point. Well, this upcoming competition, um, man, it means a lot to me. I realize very much that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. I am not taking it lightly. I'm pouring every bit of energy I have into this. I, not for one second, in my, do I think that I'm entitled to this, I'm just gonna walk out there and kick everybody's butt. That's not, that's not happening. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm gonna give it everything I have to do the best I can, to be the best I can be. You know, this is really kind of the culmination of my dream. You know, my dream was to compete in the Arnold Classic. And it's kind of surreal to know that that's actually gonna happen. I wanted to compete in the Arnold Classic actually more than Mr. Olympia. That's how much this show means to me. I'm more excited about this competition than any of the 40 or 50 I've ever done. Iron Rebel has been a, a real blessing to me. I am um, actually used to work with Ed uh, here and there. And then one day Ed from Iron Rebel calls me and he says, hey, would you be interested in getting involved with the clothing line? And that question kind of took me aback. I've never had anybody ask me that. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I think those who know me know that I'm a little, little business entrepreneur. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. So Ed and I talked about it. What Ed wanted to do, the vision he had, was awesome. And it's hopefully reflected in the clothes and you guys can see it. It's not just squat till you puke, you know. It's good clothing, classy clothing with a little bit of an edge to it, sharp designs. And Iron Rebel has been really, really good to me since day one. And I'm absolutely excited to be their partner. I love being their partner. I, I just can't say enough good things about Ed and the Iron Rebel family. I think, you know, the way Iron Rebel was different, the way they wanted their clothing, the way they want to present it, it's not just a, hey, I'm a hardcore, look at me. You know, these are clothes that you actually wear outside the gym and the, the materials are obviously good, but they're just a little different. There's so many clothing lines that are just not reflective of what I would want to wear outside, which is fine. Some people just want gym clothes and that's great. But Iron Rebel is, is kind of both. It's, you can wear it in the gym, but you can wear it out, and the designs are sharp, they're clean. There's not too many, if you really look out there, there's not too many clothing lines to do that. 